Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm working on right now. Basically, we've seen in the previous episode that the car lifted up, and fair play, the car is at a nice height now. But, when people sit in the back of the car, it's not lifting up. Now there's a height control valve underneath, so that needs to tell the car that the back's gone down, because the car doesn't know that the back's gone down, so there's a valve that's supposed to come into play when the back's gone down, that's supposed to put more fluid into the rams at the back to lift the car up. So although the car now is happy, when people sit in the back, it still would be completely drivable because it's not exactly, you know, right down, but it's not working and I'd like it to work if possible. Now the quick look online and people do say that the, uh, the height control thing is like a maintenance item. It can get seized up. The problem is it's incredibly hard to get to, but basically it is by the back wheel here let me see if I can uh, show it to you. One second. Right, this is it here. Yep, yeah. can you see it's like a concertina bit. Uh, the cylinder thing here is the height control valve. You can see all the spiral of pipes going into it, the hydraulic pipes. And basically, there's this arm that goes across here and it goes over to I don't know, it's just attached. You can see it's just attached to this this big arm here, I think, this one. Now, when I'm bouncing the car up and down, I can't see any movement here at all. So I'm wondering if this here needs freeing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the penetrating oil. I'm gonna spray all around there. Maybe water's flying up here and it's just got seized. So the car never knows that it's down at the back, that there's weight at the back. So I'm not gonna be able to film this bit. But what I'm going to do is spray all around this area and I'm going to try to yank on this pipe here. It's not a pipe, it's a, uh, it's a big solid lump of uh, you know metal, so it's not hollow. Uh, it's just to let this know that the car's gone down at the back. But it's kind of weird because when I bounce the back, get somebody else to bounce the back, I can't see any movement here whatsoever. In fact, I'll get that done now. So I've got my brother in the back and he's sitting down now, right? And I'll tell you what, bounce it for me, would you, Dave? Oh, hold on, that is, is that bar moving? Is it twisting? Uh, well, I can't see any movement on the concertina bit and I can't see any movement in this thing here. I think maybe it needs to twist then and maybe it's not twisting in, in this part here. Maybe it's kind of seized up, possibly. Um, that might be why it's not moving this arm that then moves this. I can't quite work out what's going on, but what I'll do is I'm going to spray it all and I'm going to keep kind of yanking it around the place, get my brother to bounce. Let's see then if it frees itself up. At least then we might be able to understand the mechanism. Right, okay. So I haven't got anywhere yet, but I thought this metal here was part of this bracket. There's like a bracket that comes along. But now when I put my screwdriver or this little bradle in here, I can feel that it feels indented around here. I'm wondering if this part has got seized to the bracket because this bracket is attached to the car. And look, we've got a concertina bit, so surely this torsion bar or whatever it's called has to push in this way, in which case then this has to come out here. And then going out here, maybe then it kind of releases this valve in or out or something. Right now it's rock solid, so if I get my brother to bounce again, can you see it's not moving out there at all? and I think it should be moving in and out, maybe by like half a centimetre or a centimetre. So I'm gonna to try to free that up. Well, I can't find anything wrong with that little height control thing. Weird thing is, even when I get people to sit in the back, to me, it doesn't seem to be making much difference to that torsion bar. But the uh, how it's supposed to work is the valve actually goes in and out itself. The big thing that looks like a cylinder, big Coke can thing, looks like it goes in and out. Still can't see how the twisting really makes much difference here, but maybe it only needs to move by a couple of millimetres in order for it to work. Now, it's still not working even though I've tried to move it up and as far as I can see, there is, I can get a screwdriver and I can actually physically move the piston just a little bit, but it does move. I'm wondering, on this car, because the hydraulics at the back are linked to the braking system, they have this thing where it will only allow the suspension to work if the brake system is working fine. So in other words, the brakes are the most important thing. They're going to take rain over the suspension at the back. So there's supposed to be a priority valve somewhere underneath there. And once the pressure's built up enough 
in the braking system, it will then allow the priority valve to work. If the pressure is not enough in the braking system, the priority valve won't work and it won't push fluid through to the rear springs. Now, we already seen in the previous video that the rear springs definitely lifted up 100%, no argument about that. And also, they're still up now. I've got a nice bit of room under there. But I'm wondering whether the height control, now that they've risen up, whether the height control is not working because there's not enough pressure built up in the braking system. A, because we've got a leak at that front wheel over there. And secondly, it's not holding on to pressure. When you turn the key off, you should be able to get a good 20, 30, 40 pumps off the brake pedal before those warning lights come on. On my car, one pump, that's all I get. One pump and the brake lights come on. So I think, and I could be completely wrong, but I think that these green spheres at the front here have gone. So we've got one here, and annoyingly, we've got one underneath that to uh, just over that side there horizontal now i've tried to put the chain wrench around there and i cannot it's really hard to get access to it the other one looks to be impossible to get access to but uh even though i've got a good grip on it it's not moving around at all so what i started to do was i've started to undo the bolts just to see if they will come undone and it looks like they are so i'm going to take off the whole valve including the green sphere and then hopefully I can take it down the shed and that way then I might find it easier to move the green sphere because it's just lack of uh, lack of room once I get that valve body removed I'm hoping then I'll have access to the other one and maybe the other one I can remove in situ without having to take off the valve but uh, yeah this is obviously going to introduce air into the system apparently this here is the bleed nuts here you're supposed to turn this a full turn one whole turn round anti-clockwise lefty loosey and then you're supposed to run the car and that's supposed to bleed it internally and put the fluid back into the reservoir over there the air bubbles and the fluid uh, over there so uh, yeah it shouldn't be hard to bleed but i think i've got so much work to do on here i think i just need to change parts and then i think i just need to work out how to bleed at the very end because there's a sequence there's loads of different things to bleed and there's a sequence of doing it so it all seems a bit complicated but again we won't worry about that now let's just see if we can get these spheres off so i've bought them I've spent yet another 500 pounds on different parts. Those two there, they weren't that expensive. I think they were 60 something plus fat, so 80 odd quid. And uh, I bought all the repair things that I need for underneath this suspension here. So yeah, but I'm hoping once, uh, once I do that, maybe apart from some fuel lines underneath you never know i might get away with the rest i've been spraying this up you can see we're starting to get a nice shine i need to now flat it all back but uh there's a few runs and stuff on the top coat but again if i'm successful with that it'd be quite nice to see if i can get a rattle can finish on the car but only if i'm successful with that i am kind of tempted to do that but uh, yeah, so this video now, I'm just going to be trying to remove this sphere. It's going to be next to impossible to film. I'm just undoing the bolts around the place. So basically I've undone uh, a bolt down here on the bracket. There's another one there and this top one here. Then I have to undo the little Jubilee clip or hose clip there. And also the two, see these two fixed pipes that go in here. I've just started to slacken these off and luckily they're both moving because everything's covered in oil so nothing's seized. So uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is take them all off and I think to stop everything leaking out, I think I might try to bung up the ends with, I'm not too sure, a bit of tape over it or something like that or I might try to get a bit of rubber and then, then a bit of tape to kind of seal it and that way then hopefully I won't lose all the fluid. But apparently with the fluid you're supposed to change it every couple of years anyway because it can draw water into it and then when it draws water into it it can then uh, rust the, the lines out from the inside so it wouldn't be much harm really to drain the whole thing down anyway. Okay I've got the camera balanced on the engine and uh, I have undone the Jubilee clamp a hose clip from this top pipe here. Now, the I've pumped the brake pedal about 60 or 70 times, even though the red light's been on from the very first pump. I'm curious to know how much pressure is in this pipe here. So I'm filming it to see whether it really will kind of explode everywhere, even after I've depressurized it as much as I think that I can do. So here goes. I'm just gonna wear, uh, I've got my goggles on. I'm just gonna try to ease up this clamp at the bottom here and here it comes it's about to come right okay uh, I've got the bowls on the floor underneath let's see what's gonna happen I hope it doesn't cause damage to any of these belts here
Here we go. We're free. Okay. We're free. Right. Is it all going to pour out of there? Yeah, it's pouring out of there. I wonder is it only so much or will it keep going? See, this is quite high up, isn't it, in relation to things, but it's definitely lower down than a reservoir. Okay, well, you see there was no build-up or pressure there, so that's good. Right, I'm going to get the spanner, undo these two, and then I can undo the top one, and uh, hopefully we can lift it out. So now, these might be the ones that have the... Uh, these are going to be more high pressure here, aren't they? This might be just kind of like a return one. Right, what I'm going to do is, before I do the final takeout, because I think it's nearly there, I'm going to try to clean up, clean it up a little bit, otherwise it's all going to go in the, uh, it's all going to go in the valve itself. So the very fact that when I am turn the engine on, the lights go out, that says to me that maybe the brake pumps, because before we get to here, there's two brake pumps, one for each system, one for this accumulator here and one for the underneath accumulator. So one for this green sphere and another one for the other green sphere. I'm thinking that they must be working. Otherwise, wouldn't they, wouldn't the light not come up to, it wouldn't come up to pressure, wouldn't it? Surely those lights would, uh, would stay on. So I think it's just the fact it's not storing pressure. So I think the car is drivable, but where it's not drivable is if you stalled it, then it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be able to stop because there's no pressure there. So if you stalled it at the top of the hill, it's just going to be, you're going to have to try to rely on the handbrake, which isn't going to get you anywhere. Don't even know if the handbrake works. Right, okay, I've got the screw out. Whoa, whoa. That's why I wanted to film it. Did you see that? Right, okay, I've got the screw out. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Whew, I'm just editing this and uh, I can feel my heart going. That nearly gave me a heart attack and I knew it was going to happen any any minute. It just uh, <laughs> it crept up on me. Apologies for anybody watching that. That was uh, quite a shock. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the video. Now. Is that still going to come out? Did you see that now? That was certainly under pressure. Right, did I get my camera? I don't think I did, but I got everywhere else. Has that stopped because I've just pushed it back in? Well, that's annoying. I hit that brake pedal loads of times. Lucky I had my glasses on. Well, I'm just going to do the brake pedal more. Right, so what's that about? Is it because I haven't bled it here? See, I'm worried now that uh, if I, I think it's stopped because I've just pushed that back in, I think if I pull that in out again, it's going to still explode. I'm going to undo this nut here. I've got one big cleanup operation to do now. Now, I don't know how much of that came off on camera, but uh, I've actually got splats of the stuff on my glasses there, so it's a good job I was wearing them. So I'm thinking that this bleed thing is probably only going to work when you've actually got the ignition running. So I think this is going to be a bit pointless. There we go. But what I'll do is I will uh, pump the pedal while this is undone. There you go, that's a full turn now. Unless, of course, has the pressure come through from the back? You know, the back spheres, I really don't know. Right, okay. Uh, I presume that bleed thing only works when you've got the engine running, but I'm not going to run the engine now. Everything's going to go flying everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that pipe now with this rag over it. Hopefully, then, that will be, uh, that will be it. Is there any more pressure there, I wonder? No, I don't think there is. Right, the pressure has gone. Pressure's gone from that pipe, so I'll leave that one there. Now I'm going to try the one next to it. 
and then I can do the big cleanup afterwards. I'm not sure whether this is a complete separate chamber on the inside. It's a shame I can't show you this, it's very, very hard to film. I think you get the idea though. What a mess, it's just, everything's green. I've got to be careful because I know when this stuff goes on the tyres it eats through it so I don't want it to sit on any of the pipes so I'm going to have to do a big clean up. That's why I say in all my videos don't copy what you see because that could have got, you know, could have gone in my eye quite easily. Right here goes, is this going to explode outwards? Let's put the cloth down here and give it a wiggle. No, okay, excellent. Right, so the pressure's gone there now, good. Right, I'm going to leave that there a second and undo this top bolt. Then we can take it out. Right, here goes, moment of truth. Come on now. You should be ready to come out. So let's undo that one there and take it from the bottom. Undo that one there. We are... Whoa, this is heavy. We're free. There we go. We're out, we're out, we're out. Yeah. Excellent. So let's bring this down to the shed. First of all, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean up the whole car. Let me just get the camera to show you where it's gone. Even went as far as here. You see all the splats around here? Went all over me, all around here, all up around here, all around here. And lots and lots down there. And a huge amount on the floor. So I'm going to have to do quite a big clean up. So I wondered, do you reckon there was some sort of blockage which was stopping it from going through to the rest of the system or something? Or is it just that I didn't bleed it? Oh, sneaky, look what we have here. What do you see just here? Citroen logo, isn't it? Right, okay, I'm gonna give that a good clean up, clean up the car, and then let's see if we can take off that sphere down in the shed. Right, let the fun and games begin. So I'm thinking if I was to clamp it, then I might be able to just do it by hand. So now, if I clamp there and there, that's not going to go on anything dodgy. Just to see whether it's easier when you've got access, or is it still a complete and utter nightmare. Right, it goes. We are on. So I want to be going this way around. Is it going to go or not? Come on now. It goes. Come on. Whoa. Now I can feel the tool here bending. No, you see he's just bent this out of the way here. Right, I'll end up breaking the tool. Let's hammer it round and then... Uh, I wonder can I just use this little notch that they've already done. No, that's just gone flat. Right, let me get my angle grinder, my little Dremel tool, let me make a notch and then I'll hammer it on round. I just want to create kind of like, if you imagine, like a, a woodcutter's chop in a tree. So I want this side to be flat, because that's the side I'm hammering, and this side to be slightly angled. Right, I'll try it like that. There we go. Hey, woohoo! Do you know what? I think even if you had a lovely big rubber strap, I still think that you would find that very hard to do. I reckon that that is the uh, that's the technique.
a bit dirty up this side. Lots of green. Mm, interesting. It's a little bit more black. And where is the rubber washer gone? Oh yeah, the rubber washer's still here, around the edge. There we go. Right, okay, I'm going to give that a, a nice clean up and then we have to try to take off the other one. Right, this is going to be my plan down here. So, uh, it's very hard to get to underneath. It would be a lot easier, obviously, if you had a pit. But I've got to jack the car up to try and get under it and it still looks like it's going to be tight. So, what I'm going to do is, rather than trying to get the chain in there, because I can't get the chain in there, because that side of the sphere is against the engine block. There's about this much room and I can't fit my chain in. So, I am going to get the Dremel tool and I'm going to cut a little notch if I can, just here, in this bit here, like I did down in the shed. And uh, I'm going to go in there with a very long chisel and a, and a club hammer, a nice long chisel. Hopefully I can angle it here and be tapping it, hoping that will be okay. Now, I think pressure's going to fly out of here as well, but I presume as I'm undoing it, maybe with a bit of wiggle, a bit of kind of, it might spurt out there rather than explode out the whole car, it might just kind of come out in one direction. But look, I'll try and film it, but all you're going to see is my hands and my head, and really you're going to see nothing, but you might hear something. Yep, what you'll hear is me crying with despair as this job is just unbelievably hard. Anyway, let's give a shout out to those group of patrons that support at the top level, and they are the My Mate Vince Massive. This month, the members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeves.com, DJVG, Ellis Garbert, Pixie, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeke C, and Anthony Dean. Thank you guys. Now, let's watch this pain that I'm suffering. Just want to see if that's enough, it's probably not. Look at the size of that cold chisel. Now that's what you want. No way, no way that's going to get it. for this soul destroying really is why didn't they just put a big hexagon on the end of it where they filled it up with gas put a big hexagon on so you could just get a socket set on and undo it it's ridiculous well i'm skipping vast bits of this but uh, it was painful i tried so many different screwdrivers and cold chisels to try to get the sphere to budge it just wouldn't it's so hard to get to it might be okay if you can put the car up on a ramp, but uh, you know I couldn't get it from underneath, I couldn't get it from the top, I can't get a, uh, uh, a wrench around it because there's not enough clearance between the sphere and the actual engine itself. It, uh, it really is, a, in my opinion, a horrible job to get to. But anyway, at long last, I found a tool that looks like it will be perfect for it. Oh, look what I found now, surely this it's even made for hammering, look at that. And it's got a nice sharp end on it. Surely this has to help me out. <laughs> I 
I'm coming at it from a different angle now. I'm going uh, up, up this way. Still, uh, I can get a better hit with the hammer, but it's still not showing any signs of giving. Do you know what? It must have moved round because I can't really see. Hold on. It must have moved because I can't really see where I angle ground to begin with. I bet it's. I bet it's. I bet you. I bet you it's moved round. Let me see now. God. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I've done it. I'm worn out. Oh my God. I've done it. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Right. Good news is I can't hear any hissing or anything unless it's all going to come out at me at the last minute. I hope this doesn't fly out now with a huge amount of force when I get to the last bit. Let me put some wood here otherwise it's going to go straight through the radiator. I wonder now, would, that, would the pressure be released now? Because I could wobble it. So would the pressure be working its way through the thread? I'm thinking you'd hear the pressure now if there was coming out of it. We got, it's very loose in its home. Oh God, I can't undo it. Oh. Because you see, as the sphere's coming out, the engine block kind of comes around like this. Like this, yeah? There's, it just comes out a little bit and then goes along. So as the sphere's getting bigger and bigger, it's starting to hit against this bit here. I'm wondering now if, the, uh, if it's not seated properly, the actual valve itself, not the sphere. Because I can't, uh, it's only getting bigger, you know? And I'm now a few mil. The sphere's a few mil bigger than, than what I've got here. So there's no way I'm going to be able to undo it. Can't believe after the hassle off undoing it, I still actually can't get it out. I mean, what the... It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm wondering if the whole valve's been moved a little bit lopsided. And that's why I can't get the, the chain around it. Because surely, if you couldn't get chains around it, people would be talking about this online. I'm going to see if I can have a look underneath. Okay, so I've gone underneath and I've managed to slightly undo the bleed screw because I'm going to need to get to that, aren't I, when I get the new one on. That was 12 mil. And then the two screws attaching the valve, not the green sphere, but the valve that the sphere's attached to, I've managed to slacken them off just a couple of turns. I can't tell you how hard it is to get to. It's like whoever designed this part of it thought... What can I do to really, really pee off anybody in the future doing this? Yeah, I'll do that, and I'll put this in that way. I'll put the pipes across the bolts that you need to get to. Oh, and the rigid pipes, it is a nightmare. Anyway, I haven't managed to get to the bolt at the back of the valve. I'm hoping by undoing the two ones near the sphere, I might then, it might just give me a couple of millimetres to be able to undo this. I really thought that the uh, hardest part would be undoing the sphere, but... Uh, I'm not so sure. Anyway, look, I've got loads more turns on it now. Come on. I'm stuck again. Yes, I've done it. Brilliant. It fell into the bowl as well. Oh, yes. Result. What a complete and utter horrible job to do. Right, here we go. That was an absolute epic. Look how much fluid is coming out of this absolutely loads 
way more than the other ones, or the one in the uh, or the ones out the back. So I'm wondering whether or not the membrane in here is completely split, and that's why it wasn't holding any pressure. Look, it's still going. So maybe it's uh, you know the whole thing is filled up with fluid, rather than only going up to wherever the membrane is. You know the trampoline bit that I explained before. Still going. Look at all that. It's a huge amount. Okay, so a couple of days later now, and my lovely box from Flying Spares has arrived. About £450 I think I spent on this here. And in it I have two green spheres for the front, this one here, and there's another one here. And look, I also got, check this out, the repair piece for the suspension. You know, it's cracked on my one. Look at the size of that. And I also got the plastic thing that goes on the bottom there, and then the bottom of the spring, this cup, that was £40 that cup there. But still, it's missing on my one because it's all rotted through, so I kind of need it. And I've got brackets as well. I think this main thing down here was roughly around £150, I can't remember if that includes that or not. All very expensive, but fair play to Flying Spares, they do deliver promptly. Their website's easy to work around, and they've got specialist knowledge. So if you're stuck on something, then they will be able to find you the right part. I mean, they found the part for my the little T-valve that I was having problems with for the washer jets in the front. So, good UK company, looks like they're employing between, on the website looks like there's about 20 to 30 people. So a nice little thriving business, which is good keeping cars like this and also nicer Rolls Royces on the road, which uh, has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Right, okay, let's get these spheres fitted and then see whether or not it's gonna maintain pressure. I'm not sure at this moment in time because we still have a leak on that front braking system. I presume it's from the brakes, I don't know that. But I'm wondering whether it will hold more pressure now if I change the valves over. Uh, I'm only going to film little snippets of it because all you're going to be seeing is my back, just like when I took them off. You can't see anything. But all I'm doing is just uh, putting some LHM fluid around the little wash, uh, the rubber washer sealer, and then screwing them in. And then what I have to do is try to tighten them up. I'll try and do it with the wrench. Uh, I think I'm going to struggle to get the wrench in, but I uh, I may have to uh, I may have to try to knock it round with the cold chisel. But if I can get the wrench round, then I should be able to tighten it up. So I can do one of them in the shed, which is good, and then the other one I'll just hopefully struggle with the wrench on the car if I can uh, fit it now that I've loosened those bolts a bit. So uh, yeah, hopefully it will be straightforward. Let's see. Hope the old one is faulty. Wish there was a way that you could easily uh, easily test them. All right, now let's make sure that it's nice and clean. Let's get some fluid. And wrap it around this. I'm hoping that should be plenty. Now we need to screw this in without messing up that uh, washer. This is going to be easy because it's uh, on the vice here. Yeah, so the washer just fits nicely straight into that groove there. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting to know. You can feel a little bit of resistance, but then the washer seats itself and then it goes back in the rest of the way. And really, it seems to come to a bit of a stop. So, uh, maybe the torque setting on these is quite low. No point in me having torque anyway, because my torque wrench, I'm not gonna be able to measure what this is here, am I? But that feels like it's, uh, feels like it's just screwed into a stop. Do you know what? I think it's going to be okay. I mean, if it's loose, I'm going to see fluid leaking out of it. So uh, I think I'm going to run with that. I mean, it's not undoing by hand easily. 
Right, so I need to get that back onto the car and do up all the associated pipes. And I need to struggle trying to get the other one on the car in, uh, in situ. Okay, so I'm just working on the bottom one at the moment and I tried to screw it in from the top here. And what was happening is it was fouling again on the engine. So I had the same problem when I took off the other one. I couldn't get it on. I couldn't get it on hand tight because I only managed to get it on like half a revolution before it was fouling. Anyway, I use a spanner and I undone the two bolts. So I've got my torch there and the uh, spanner there. I undone the two bolts which are holding it to the actual body. So this one here and this one here. I didn't touch the one at the bottom. I presume there's one at the bottom on that one. But I undone 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 them two by... Uh, you know whatever like half a centimeter or something a few revolutions and then it managed i managed to get it on hand tight and it was the same thing again hand tight nice and loose all the way then when i got to the rubber section you're doing it and you're thinking oh no is it chewing up the rubber because you're doing it it's getting harder and harder and then all of a sudden it gives where the rubber seats into its seat and then uh, then it just goes free again and then you can do it the final couple of turns so i've butted it right up just like you've seen in the shed but now i need to try and get a tool on it to give it that extra turn but i'm not sure if i can if not i'm going to get that long screwdriver and i'm just going to give it a couple of taps around and i'm going to leave it at that if in the future it leaks or as soon as i start it, if it starts leaking i know i need to do more work on it but i presume that rubber is the thing that's actually doing the sealing and the fact obviously it's screwed right away in Okay, I tried to get the wrench in there and it doesn't go anywhere near, but luckily I can get this long screwdriver with the hammer bit on top. I can get it this side because we're undoing it now, sorry, doing it up. It's, uh, it's easy for me to get on this side here. Right, that moved about another centimetre. I'm going to leave it like that. Well, I just thought I'd show you this bit here. This bit is the top one, you know, the one that I had down the shed when I was tightening it up. Now, the two fixed pipe, you know, the metal pipes, not the flexible hose that goes onto this one, the fixed pipes in here. The big one went in fine, and if you have a look in here, you can see that there's a nice round black washer just in here. So it's, uh, it's nice and round, so the pipe went in fine. This side here, I couldn't get the pipe in whatsoever. It felt like there was resistance. And if you have a look, I've just taken out the black rubber washer from in there, the uh, rubber sealer thing here. And this side's nice and round, yeah? But look at this side, you can see it's kind of a little bit oblong and a little bit more crushed. So I think what was happening is the pipe was kind of foul in this when it was going in. It, the pipe needs to go through this here. So I think, well, I presume it must be going through it. I'm gonna put this onto the pipe first then put the pipe in here. This one I should be able to get away with because it all looks nice and round anyway, so the pipe will just wiggle its way through. And also the washer looks thicker. But I think this is too thin, so I'm gonna pop this on the pipe first, then the pipe goes all the way in, and then the nut goes on and screws and crushes this washer down onto that. I think that's how it seals. Right, so these two pipes now, and you can see I've put the rubber washer on here. This one here. So now when that goes on, it's gonna go in nice and uh, without fouling anything. So what I've done is I just kind of balanced the pipes in there and held the sphere in one hand and just put this top bolt on. Everything's really loose because I need to be able to work the pipes in, but I need it to be able to take the weight off the sphere by just putting this top one here. Then once I have the pipes in position, I, I, I won't do this one until the very end, the flexible hose, but then I can get the two bolts uh, all the way through. And I presume, I don't know, but I'm thinking, see these like ceramic, they're really nice, they're like big ceramic washers. They're everywhere on the inside as well. They're places like here, like here and here and another one over here. So obviously they use this spacers. So I'm gonna be putting them, I presume, on this side of the bolt here. So basically the body goes on here and then you have the metal bracket from the car then you have the washer and bolt this side so this is a spacer to keep the green sphere and the pump away from the uh, the bracket success do you know what it wasn't too bad so on uh, this one here getting in the the white washer things was okay actually once you got your hands around it because the washers want to stay in position because of the weight of the thing so you just need to put them in then when you get the bolt in you just kind of wiggle the bolt, bolt around until you find the middle of the washer so uh, yeah they actually went in okay you had to be a bit of a contortionist with your hands to get there and i had to do it up from underneath 
on one of them because I couldn't get to it. So uh, yeah, that's on there. The bolts are done up underneath as well. So the only things I have to do now is, I've got to turn it on, which I'm nervous about. I've got to check for leaks and also I need to bleed both of them. So this is the bleed one here, this, uh, this nut just here. And you need to turn it a full turn apparently, and then uh, leave it run, I think, and then uh, turn it, uh, do it back up. Well, I'm going to be doing it back up when the engine is off because I don't want to get my hand anywhere near that fan, just in case there was ever a slip or something like that. So uh, yeah, I've just nipped both of them back up, that one and the one underneath. Now I'm going to turn it on. I don't know why I'm so nervous. So I'm going to have to definitely fill up that reservoir. It's still full now, which is interesting because I already lost stuff, didn't I? before but it's still there it's still showing us full now so I think as soon as it starts and the pump pumps it from there into the sphere then that will drop pretty quickly so I might just start it for a few seconds to begin with and then uh, fill it up I don't know why I'm so nervous just put these on loosely oh wish me luck Okay, I'm in park. Here goes, come on now. Uh, let's see if those light yet. Oh, they're trying to go out. Let's have a look at the. The reservoirs here. No, they're still high. I thought that would have dropped by now. Well, I can't see anything gushing out at the moment. No, that looks okay. I don't know how the reservoirs can still be high. Wow, okay. It's gone out here now. Let me pump the brake a few times. Oh, that's interesting. Look, it's not flicking red. Last time that was flicking red. Right, let's have a look at the reservoir now. No, the reservoirs are still high. That's really confusing. Right, okay. Look at all the smoke burning off. I presume that's from the fluid that I, uh, that I spilt everywhere. Better not breathe that in, unless the... Uh, Unless my manifold's cracked. There's a lot of smoke blowing off there. Hopefully it's just the, uh, the LHM fluid burning off. Right, okay, so a few more pumps. Now let's turn it off. And now let's turn it on. Now let's see how many pumps it takes. <laughs> Last time it was one. One, yes, I've beaten that. Two, yes. Oh my word, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty! I'm in the safe zone! Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, it's gonna to have to go down a massive hill for that, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, this is gonna stop off a mountain with it cut out. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, oh my god, 59, yes, beat that, that could be like a record, we could set a new thing worldwide, who can get the most amount of pumps out of your silver spirit, my mate Vince challenge, 59, unbelievable, right, let's start it up again and see if they go out, oh look at that, I don't believe that. Honestly, I'm so, so happy with it. Not happy that there's a load of smoke coming off the engine, but I'm hoping that's just burning off the uh, fluid that I dropped. 
what a result there we go well you've seen it wasn't doing that before so 100 percent the front spheres were faulty whether or not the back spheres were faulty i don't know but the front definitely were what a result so all i have to do now is get my torch my flashlight and have a good look around the place see if there's any leaks there doesn't appear to be which is uh which is good uh if i'm just thinking if it was my exhaust manifold leaking it wouldn't still be coming out now would it and i can still see a bit of a uh, bit of smoke coming out so i presume it's just stuff that's falling down onto it oh wow God, i'm so happy so next thing to look at well maybe not next thing i might do do you know what i might do a few easy things like little lights and stuff next time uh on the next episode but i do now need to look into why this wheel has got weird sort of brake fluid coming out of it down here so i need to find out what's going on there yeah it doesn't bother me about the tire because these tires are getting replaced anyway so uh, i just need to decide whether i'm going for white wall tires or well basically i can get cheaper like four by four tires but i'm probably only ever going to have one rolls royce because let's face it my youtube channel isn't exactly thriving even though my subscribers base looks like it's thriving unfortunately it's not and uh I would like to get the proper experience and you see if I put 4x4 four four tyres on it although it's still going to be comfortable I'd like to see what it would have felt like coming out of the factory so I think I am going to go for these Avon turbo steels the only problem is they're very expensive but I kind of want to feel see what it feels like with the real tyres on so do I go for white walls or do I go for just uh, you know the tyres that's on here now so white wall look like this one here if you have a look here and it's not just on the surface painted if you were to chip away at that there would be a bit of white underneath as well I don't know how deep the actual white wall goes so I don't think I have to worry about them getting dirty so uh, yeah I have to uh, make my mind up about that but I think they are I think they're a couple of hundred pound each or 200 and something each so uh, it's not cheap but uh, yeah and what I'll do is I'll keep one of the back ones as a spare because although they're old tires they're not like crazed at the side like this one and also the tread's good on them as well so uh, oh wow I'm so happy so maybe now apart from the valve down there the brakes might be okay and when I looked at the rat trap before there was only uh, over well basically I haven't looked at it since whenever it was a couple of months ago and there was only a tiny little trail of fluid you know about uh, this much by about kind of that long but very thin and uh, since I cleaned it out I then looked the next day underneath it and there wasn't any uh, fluid there but obviously the car's not being used and the brake pedal's not being pressed so maybe once it's in use it will leak from there but it doesn't matter about that because that's a valve you know that's not going to be a nightmare to change over I wonder whether or not the braking system might be okay now obviously once i fix the front oh, i'm so 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 happy with that so that is it for this video if you enjoyed it give it a massive thumbs up and i will see you in the next episode thanks so much for watching i get the vibe that you're distant Something about you that's different I see it in your eyes Something isn't right Tell me again what I'm missing Cause you're fading on We've been here before Tell me again, just tell me again And I'll make it right Just leave it be But I see